coming. It is so amazing. It, there, of it, there is no end. There's enough for all of us and then some. Father, you are so good. You're so amazing, so gracious to us. And so now, Lord, we ask, Holy Spirit, be here in the midst of us. Teach us. Lord, let us hear from you. Father, take away the cares of this world, all the noise, all the things that distract us. May we be able to focus and see you clearer this morning. Father, we love you, praise you, honor you. And all God's children said? Amen. Awesome. You may be seated. Good morning. How y'all doing? Awesome. Good to see you here this morning. A uh, couple announcements to make. Uh, we, we were going to have a video, so it'll be great next week because got, we've got something brewing. Anyways, um, but he was sick, so we had to cancel. Okay, uh, we have the Lampost Bookstore. They're having a major sale, uh, trying to get rid of some merchandise, get some new stuff in there. Uh, but great books, all great books, 50 to 75% off. Yeah, baby. So... Uh, <laughs> You want to grow in your walk. You want to be encouraged. There's some awesome books. Uh, all of our books are handpicked, so um, they're, they're all certified good stuff. All right, so keep that in mind. Also, hey, uh, many of you have been gracious this year, and you've been giving to the Lord. Well, they have the 2019 contribution statements uh, at a table in the back, and uh, if you gave this year and you want to, you need a, a tax write-off or whatever you need to do with your taxes, I don't know. Uh, they're going to have it for you, so so keep that in mind. Yes, never mind. It's in the fellowship hall. <laughs> they lied to me. <laughs> I'm just teasing. So, yes, so go to the fellowship hall, and they will have that for you. Uh, also be in prayer. Um, we have our second team uh, that went to Belize. They left uh, this week. They left on Friday uh, to Belize. Uh, seven people. The first time we sent two in November, now seven went to Belize. And so be praying for them that God would just use them mightily uh, to do some amazing things. We're hoping that this year... Uh, we can go either, you know, to Mexico. I'm not sure that's going to work. There's some, there's some issues there. Um, but, you know, who knows? We may end up going to Africa. You know, we'll, we'll pray about that. We'll wait till you hear. This is awesome. It's going to be great. Uh, a couple of other things I need to mention to you. Uh, men and Women's Bible Study. Woohoo! It's back and better than ever. Monday night, 6 o'clock. And uh, there is child care. So, you know... Uh, Keep that in mind. Men go and study in one room. Ladies, completely different study. They're going through uh, Jonah, right? Yes, Jonah. Uh, Priscilla Shire, sure, whatever you want to say her name. She's awesome. She's amazing. Great study. Uh, so that's going to start this Monday, 6 o'clock, both men and women. Now, ladies, you have a bonus because if you can't make it Monday night, then Thursday at 9 o'clock, in the morning, they're going to have uh, the same study again. So if you couldn't make it Monday, you can go Thursday. But Thursday is just for the ladies. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, one last thing. Hey, there are opportunities. We have a plethora of opportunities for you to get involved, to get plugged in, to get connected. People often ask me, hey, Pastor Randy, how do you become a member? Well, if you're born again, you're a member of the body of Christ. However, uh, to be like, you know, really plugged in and get to know people and get more, more importantly, to grow in Christ, because you remember Christ was a servant. We have opportunities. There's a connection card in front of your seat back. You just pull that out check off some boxes, they will contact you. When you check off the boxes, that doesn't mean that you are committed to that ministry. It means you want information. They'll talk to you. You'll find out the one that works best for you, and then we'll get you plugged in. Um, so keep that in mind. We have plenty of opportunities for you to be more Christ-like. Woohoo! So uh, there you go. All right, um, let's pray one more time, and then I want to introduce you to someone really awesome. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for desiring to use us for your glory. And Father, right now, as we are going to hear from your word, we're going to hear a testimony of power. We're going to hear of the work of your spirit, Holy Spirit. We're going to hear about what you've been doing. And Father, I just thank you for the two young ladies that are going to come up and speak this morning for a little while before we get to our Bible study. Uh, Father, I pray you just bless them. I pray that you open our ears so we can hear from you, Lord. 
And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you didn't know, we support several different ministries. Well, one that we support and have been supporting for a while now uh, is a, a young lady that uh, I had the privilege of watching her when she was just just wee little little girl and now she's a woman and she's serving the lord and she's over in uganda and she's going to come up and tell us about what god has been doing so please give a warm hbc welcome to savannah crabtree put your coffee. yes coffee important thank you thank you so much hello everyone how are you very good. My name is Savannah. I'm from Houston, and um, I'm just going to share about what the Lord is doing in Uganda and God's heart for there. But before I begin, let me just open with some prayer. My Jesus, I just thank you so much for your great love, Lord, and your heart for Africa, your heart for Uganda, your heart for Entebbe. Lord, I just thank you for the privilege of being able to be your hands and feet and to share that love. So I just give you this time. I ask that you'll be so glorified in it, Lord, and that it'll just be for you, Lord, and that you will stir people's hearts to pray and to pray for the people in Entebbe, that they will know you as their Lord. They will know you, who you are. So Lord, I just again thank you, and I give you this time, and I pray this in your name. Amen. So one of my favorite verses is Proverbs 19.22, and it says, What is desired in a man is steadfast love, and better a poor man than a liar. So if you're saying this isn't true, that we don't desire love, then we're, we're lying. And, and, so, and that is something that I see there. Um, for me, it was God's love that saved me. I remember being very young, and my mom sitting me on the table and telling me how much Jesus loved me and that he wanted to come and live in my heart and praying and inviting him in my heart and just feeling his love just fill me. And so as I grew older, I just couldn't believe how much he loved me and how much he cared for me and that around 10 or 12, he began to stir desire to share that love with others and to go overseas somewhere to go and share who he is because his love just completely changes us. And so um, he called me a year and a half ago to Uganda to share that. And so what I do is I teach and I teach at a school in Entebbe. I teach English. If you could show the next slide. Um, and then I teach at a kids club. This is our kids club program. We have between three to 600 kids come every Saturday. We do like a VBS and teach through the Calvary curriculum, which I think you'll use here as well in Sunday school. Teach the children the word, teach them who the Lord is, do uh, different crafts, and we also share a meal. And so for a lot of the kids in the community, that will be their meal for the day. And then if you can show the next slide. I also teach at Calvary Chapel Christian School. I teach English. It's a school there, and it, we teach English for fifth through seventh grade. I help with the devotions in the morning. We have our kids program, and then I also teach at an orphanage that's just down the road, um, teaching Bible and reading, because for the orphanage of around 100 children, from babies through seventh grade, they have about three teachers. <laughs> So I just go with a big bag of books, and me and another lady go. We divide the school into half, and we just go and teach reading and Bible. And then halfway through, we swap the children and then teach the other half. And so it has been a big blessing just to get to share God's love, to share who he is, and then to go support the community. If you can show the next slide. This is me at the school. Um, we also have a library. And then I often have kids come over afterwards to keep working on reading, to get another meal. And um, if you see the next slide, that's my fifth grade classroom. So I have around 35 kids um, in that class. And so they just want to know about Jesus. Education is such a gift there. 
and education is such a blessing to get to teach them how to read and to support them. A lot of kids, they don't get to finish um, school or primary school. A lot of their parents, they don't really know how to read. And so for them, this is um, the, a hopeful generation because in the last generation, they had a big war. And so for their parents and grandparents, there was a huge um, kind of civil war with guerrilla warfare and the army. And so this is the generation that everyone says gets to go to school and have a future that their parents never thought possible. And so if you see the next slide, um, this is just shared what God's called me to. He's called me to love people in his name. Like Proverbs says, we desire love. We desire God's love, and we desire um, to know him. And so, and to create a safe place for children to come, for my home just to be, for any kid to come. I, I, I don't ever know who's going to all be there. I have between three to 15 kids come often for dinner or for reading or for a Bible study. And so just to love people in Jesus' name and create a safe place for them. Often the children and women are abused or abandoned. Um, I host meals for them. A lot of the families in my neighborhood know if there's not food that night that they can send their kids to my house or if the parents have gone to the village to go to a funeral or to go to some business and the kids will come and I'll be able to pack them a bag of food. Um, I, can, I just want to share a testimony. You can see the next slide. Um, of, these are some of the kids. The girl in the top left corner, her name is Peruth. She was in the village that I first lived in and she was getting um, just abused in her home. So uh, after finding her situation, one of the ladies in the church, her heart hurt for her and she wanted to take her in but she didn't have the financial means. So just being able to help and pay for school and to give them food every month has allowed her to love Peruth, pour into her, teach her how to be a godly woman in Uganda, and allowed her to go to school. The boy in the um, lower corner, Jordan, he was also in that same village called Ngombe, and he was out of school for years. He was known for being the crazy demon-possessed kid that would chase kids in the field with a machete. And um, he got saved, but he ended up, yeah, he ended up knowing the Lord, but he, they, they didn't think he'd get to go to school because he spent so many years out of school. So now he's been able to, um, and God has led me and led him on this side so he can go to school and then come to my house to practice reading because even though he's 14 years old, he still struggles with reading and he's just finished second grade. So there's a lot of days we are crying together and crying to not give up because he can do this. Um, and so that's what God's called me to do, to um, love these kids, to fight for these kids, to cry with these kids, to cry with their parents, and to encourage them in the Lord and to show that God does have a plan for their future. He does love them. He does want to bless them. He does know them. He does see them. Um, you can see the next slide. This is the top left corner is the orphanage I go to. Then that's another school on the right that I help and teach Bible at. Um, we also have a youth program. A lot of the youth um, kind of live with extended family um, or a family friend. And so they don't get an opportunity just for someone to love them, to have to learn about the Bible. So they have um, a youth program where they can come on Sunday. We end up in four years going through the Bible and just have events and be loved. And then the bottom right is one of the kids at the orphanage with the book. And he couldn't really read, but we were, we were looking at the pictures together and it was fun. Um, you can show the next slide. There are so many needs. Um, just living in poverty, a lot of families struggle with even having food. And maybe they know God or they go to church, 
but there's a very big misunderstanding of the Lord's heart for them. They think because they're suffering that God is somehow punishing them and that God is far from them and that they can't call upon him and that he wants to be their God. So what something I love about Jesus is he meets us where we're at. And he meets us when we cry out to him, he hears us. So what God has allowed me to do is just meet them where they're at and to share Jesus and get to know their story and encourage them. And so for everyone that's different, some people it means helping them with food. Um, for some it's help so helping support them in school. Um, for some it's just sitting and crying with them and letting them know it's okay to cry and that we can you know, cry out to the Lord and he hears us. And so it's just a lot of being with people, sharing God's heart with them, sharing how he cares for them. Um, one of the ladies, you can show the next picture. One of the ladies, Mama Cyrus in the right, um, she has seven children live with her. This is her house. Her husband is an alcoholic and very abusive, often, in, often threatening their life. But because of that culture, if she leaves, he has full right to the kids. And so she stays with him for her children. And she works for food because he ends up spending all of his money on alcohol. And so she's working for food and she's working to hopefully build her house. And she's working to put her kids in school. But with seven children, her, her whole amount she makes in a month only pays for one of the school fees for one of child for the term. And so just being able to meet with ladies like her and cry with her, be with her, helping put her kids in school, um, learning about budgeting together, and then finding out, okay, what's a business or what's something that she can do to help generate income um, and just love her in the Lord. Um, the boys on the left corner in a lower, that's Ivan. He's the one with the y'all shirt. And um, he was one of my students that two years ago I just thought didn't care about school because he would come for a day or two and then disappear and then come for a day and disappear. And uh, he lives with his grandma who is completely lame in a house smaller than this. And he is the breadwinner at home. So he would be my student at day and then at night for several air hours um, do fishing in the lake, which is illegal. So anytime the police would catch him, they would beat him with sticks. So then he would miss a day or two of school. Um, <clears throat> and so just allowing him to gain some income that's in a legal way and encourage him to be in school and encourage and support his family with food. It's allowed him to now study and he's now been able to go to school and learn and um, <coughs> and know God's heart for him and that God sees him. And so that's a lot of what it's God's been doing. Below is a, a business we're going into and with some of the different boys who have to earn f money for their families. It's just a local street food um, of making kind of like a tortilla and egg thing and so this allows them they go in the morning before school they go in the afternoon after school and they're able to work and keep all their profits for their family and so this allows them to still have that honor and integrity of taking care of their family but also go to school and learn and hopefully have a better life and so that is that's God's heart he wants to meet people where they're at um, you can see the next slide it's just loving people in the Lord, you know. We desire, we desire love, and then we desire God's love. And God has chosen us to be the vessels, his hands and feet, and his heartbeat to share that. And whether here or Uganda or wherever, we get to go and just love people in the Lord. And so it's just creating, um, being av available for God, being, okay, God, this person's face keeps copying popping up in my head. What do you want me to do about that? Okay, God, this child showed up on my doorstep. What do you want me to do about that? And just seeing God's faithfulness over and over to provide and to love these kids. You can see, show the next slide. Um, education is such a gift there. The average Ugandan woman has around seven children. 
And so because school, it is a gift, many of the parents didn't go past third or fourth grade. And so especially for their girls, they don't understand the importance of education. They think, you know, if I don't have enough money and my child, my girl is 13 years old, I'll just get her married off because he'll be able to take care of her. She'll also, the family will also receive a dowry of cows or chickens for their daughter and then it just continues on and on. So a lot of these girls end up being either house girls and basically being someone's servant until they're older, or they end up being married at a young age and going through a lot of abuse, and there's a lot of polygamy there. And so it's just being able to support a child in education and um, put them in school really helps change their future, change their life, change their children's life, because for most of the families, if their child could be in school, they would let them. It's just they, when they struggle with food and you have so many children, you have to decide, is this one gonna go to school or this one? And then I'm, who, what am I gonna do? We already can't eat enough. At least if they go and get married, they can have food. And so um, being able to put children in school has been a big blessing. I've actually, I'm actually gonna be able to have a girl come stay with me because um, she is one of nine and her, um, her, her parents can't afford for her to go to school. And at 13, they've decided she's done with school and she was just gonna work digging in different people's garden for money. And so she's gonna come stay with me so she can go to school and have a safe place and learn and be loved and know the Lord because that's God's heart. And so, um, you can see the next slide. This is Angel and Junior. This is another Angel. These are two of the kids that I'm hoping to put into school next year. Um, their mom has just had bad situation after bad situation, and so they've been out of school the whole year. And so part of what I'm hoping to do is raise money and be able to put more kids in school, because I have five in now. And then there's another five, as of now I know, that I want to be putting in school when the term starts in February. Um, and so this is their home. It's just a simple brick and mud home. But they've been faithfully coming to Kids Club. They're excited to know about Jesus. They're great kids. They're kids that come over when their mom is in the village. Because often Angel, who's 12, has to take care of and will go wash clothes to bring in money so that she can buy food for her and her brother. And so just being able to let her go to back to school and let him go back to school and know that they can have a future is a big blessing. You can show the next slide. And so just my home is a safe place for children to know Jesus. Um, I have students come with bloody mouths, high fevers, all different situations, and they just know if they show up at my doorstep, they can hopefully know Jesus and have uh, um, receive help. I have kids come. I've had kid, I've come home and found kids in my bed because their guardian decided that it's the holidays and they don't want a child right now. And so they'll come and stay with me for a few weeks. I have kids who, when their parents have to go and work in the village, they'll come stay with me. Or if their parents are gone, they'll at least eat with me so they can have a meal. Um, I've taken kids to dentists, doctors, eye doctors, everything just to support them. Um, you can see in the next, and just God's heart says, let the little children come to me. Let them know me. And so there's one of the two boys I've taken to the dentist. He came to me with a bloody mouth. He had been working odd jobs the whole holiday and finally saved enough money for one of his teeth to get pulled. Well, they didn't pull it right. And they, at 16, they wanted to pull another five teeth. And I was like, that's not right. <laughs> so taking him to the dentist, he had nine cavities. And we were able to take care of those and then um, let him have a chance. And so he can go back to school next year without his mouth hurting. Um, the girl in the top left, that's Per Ruth again. She had malaria. She had a bacterial infection. And she had a very bad yeast infection. And so she had a high fever, couldn't walk, and just being able to take her to 
the doctor so she can receive injections and get the help needed. And yeah, that's, this is a common night at my house. I don't always know who's going to show up, but we always have food, and we always have fun, and we always have fellowship. And so um, this is the Lord's heart. You know, we are all part of the body, and he wants to use us to share his love and who he is with others. And so it's just being available to the Lord and saying, okay, God, you know, my house is yours, my time is yours, my food is yours. How can I use this to glorify you? Um, so you can show the next slide. And so I just ask you to pray. Um, just with everything growing, the Lord is leading me to start a kind of a community organization so that I can grow sponsorship underneath it. Because just as I hear more kids' stories, a lot of kids are out of school. And then I believe the Lord is leading me to be able to foster kids next year. Um, I have kids come stay with me on short term, but I've had a lot of run-ins with street kids or um, runaways. And so I would love for you guys to be praying as I'm going into this and that the Lord would just lead and guide. You have to go through a lawyer and there's a lot of legal things you have to do but it would be amazing just to have a refuge for kids, whether it's for two weeks or two months or five years or 10 years, you know, just to let kids come and be loved and know the Lord and uh, to have a place for them. Um, and just also for wisdom with all the needs, you know, you're just surrounded. Some days you can have seven different families um, crying to you about real needs and so you have to take it all before the Lord and say okay God do I get involved do we just pray together and God is going to show up and show himself to them do you want me to get involved do I ask someone else in the church to get involved um, there's just a lot of situations you need discernment and wisdom in and uh, um, there's a, God's, I just think it's God's provision with, I'm looking for a bigger house so I can host more kids and have more kids and just have a safe place for them to be. Um, and then for also for my, the rest of my kids to be in school because come February, that's when their, their year starts. And so I'm just praying for God to continually provide for that. Um, I just need committed prayer support. You can show the next one. Um, there's a lot of witchcraft there. There's a lot of witch doctors there. And um, they're often the ones um, abusing people, having people cut themselves, offering sacrifices, um, raping women, all of these things. And then people go out for help. People go when they're desperate. They want change. Um, one of my girls, Jam Jamira, she, her mom died and her dad remarried a witch doctor. The witch doctor convinced her dad that her, that Jamira and the other sisters were not his daughters, that it was the mom having affairs. So the dad was able to then abuse and do terrible things to his daughters because she told her that they're not really his, that they've been lying. She then had the girl's houses, the girl's rooms burned down and the girl came to me a month after fleeing from her father because her father threatened to do very bad things to her. And so you just, you face these situations and this brokenness and you're like, God, what can I do? But I can tell you she's come to know the Lord and that the Lord actually led her to go back with her sister whom the father did bad things to and tell the father that she's forgiven him and because of Jesus and so Jesus is changing the lives and changing the futures of these families. But with all of that, with even Jordan, who's been delivered from that, he still has gaps in his memory and hurt pain of people telling him stories of things he's done that he has no idea and just crying about it because he doesn't know how to deal with that. So I just need wisdom with it. I need wisdom on how to counsel these children. And I need prayer against just all of the just spiritual attack. Um, I cannot do this without y'all. So if anyone would like to receive my newsletter, I send it about every other month, just kind of what the Lord's been doing, what God's kind of leading in the future, and then I'll give you kind of just names and children and people to pray for. Um, I need your prayers. I need your support. I need you guys 
to be in the fight with me because it's just too much. I can just tell you it's, it is too much for me to do without Jesus. It is too much to handle without his grace and his guidance and his wisdom and his peace. There are just too many needs. I cannot do this without the Lord and without people willing to help stand in a gap with me and pray because there are so many days where you're just like, God, I have no idea. I have no idea how to help this person or get involved. I have no idea what to do. And so God has been so faithful. He's been so great to meet me every time. His faithfulness is great. His mercies are new each morning. His compassions fell not. He loves them more than I ever could. But I do need y'all's prayers because that is what changes things. It's Jesus who changes things. We are the body. We all desire God's love. And we all desire to know him. And he has called us to be his hands and feet. Um, in Romans 10, it talks about, you know, how can all who call upon the name of the Lord are saved? But how can they know if they don't hear? And how can they hear if someone doesn't preach? And how can someone preach if they're not sent? And it talks about how beautiful are the feet that bring the gospel of peace. So we just all have a part in that. And so I just want to encourage and ask y'all to be praying and to be praying for the people of Uganda, to be praying for these children, and praying that God will continually just go forth and change their lives, because they need him. And they are so hungry for someone to love them. There is so much brokenness that they are just so hungry for someone to care and to know that God isn't far and God isn't punishing them, and that God does love them and does have a plan for them. So I just ask you to continue praying. I want to thank you for just all of your support and love. I really could not do this just without y'all, honestly. It is, it is all Jesus. I am just, I am no one. And so I just ask you to continue in the fight with me. And I also just want to invite my mom. My mom and dad have also, once you meet the kids, you just fall in love. And so they have fallen in love, and they are going to be moving out here this year to come and support and help. So I just want to invite my mom, Leanne, and let you hear what God is leading her. Um, thank you so much. There's nothing, well, there's lots of good things, but um, there's nothing better than people loving your daughter and praying for your children. So thank you for praying for Savannah. Thank you for loving her. Thank you for supporting her. And um, yes. God is good. He, um, he's called us to Uganda also. So my husband and I are going to put our house on the market in two weeks, and we're going to sell everything and um, quit our job to be obedient to the Lord. And um, he just tells us to not be afraid or discourage. Um, he's personally going ahead of us in Deuteronomy 31.8. Um, we're going to be there to support Savannah and what God's doing in her life. Um, she's single, but she's married to the Lord. And um, we're going to also hopefully be able to support the church at Calvary and Tebe. Um, it's just fun to love the children. They're, they're so obviously hungry for love, and sometimes you don't get that here in the United States. Um, we're much more closed off or private where there's not air conditionings and there's not floors and everything has an open window and some people don't even have front doors so you hear your neighbors and you see what's going on and so it allows you to be a part of the community more and my husband and I need that we um, can get very comfortable and very easy here in America um, my husband feels led to work with the medical teams at the church um, I love to read. I love children, so I think the Lord's going to use me a lot with that, and I'll probably be cooking a lot of food. <laughs> and, um, and I love to pray with ladies and see God work. And um, being in our 50s, we're blessed because we have seen what God's done the past. We've been saved 29 years, so we've seen what God's done versus when you're in your 20s, and you just want that quick, quick, quick. Now, I know I'll fall back on my flesh at times, so if you think about Savannah's parents, Ken and Leanne, please pray that we'll be strong in the Lord and we will walk in courage. We will fight the good fight because Jesus is coming back quickly and we just want to be in his will. That was great. 
Isn't that awesome? Yeah, I think it's fantastic. And that's why we've been supporting and we're going to continue to support. Now, real quick, open your Bibles to Romans chapter 10. This will be the fastest study I've ever done. <laughs> Hang on to your hats. Father, may your word come alive. May you speak. May you be glorified. And may we listen. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Romans chapter 10, verse 14 through 17. And I've entitled my message, Hearers, Senders, and Sent. Which are you? So we're going to ask that question. At the end, we're going to answer that question. Are you a hear hearer? Are you a sender? Or are you sent? Romans chapter 10, verse 14. How then, and it's interesting that Savannah mentioned that. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Now, hearers, let's look at the hearers first. We have four days put in a question, and then we have one then as a conclusion, all referring to hearing the gospel and the hearers of the gospel. The first one is, it says the first they is, how shall they call on him who they've not believed? The second they is, how shall they believe in him who they've not heard? The third is, how shall they hear without a preacher? And then uh, they have not, the fourth one, they have not obeyed the gospel. And then the then conclusion is, then faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So we have it broken down into four uh, questions, they questions, and one then conclusion. Now, every hurting person, every unsaved person is a hurting person. I don't care if you meet someone who's not saved and they got the biggest smile on their face and they're jokey and all this stuff, they're hurting. When the lights are out, when they're all alone, they're lost and they're hurting. I know this. I was one. There's loneliness without Christ. There's a lost feeling of, you know, is there a purpose to life? There is always, in every unbeliever, there is need. You have to understand that. We have to understand that. But how to reach them? Listen, if we're going to reach the lost, people won't care about what we know until they know that we care. And that is what Savannah is doing in Africa. She's letting those kids know that she cares. And once they know that she cares, now they care about who she knows, the Lord Jesus. You see, grace received is grace bestowed. In other words, we must have grace and exhibit grace in order to give grace. I often say this, you hear me say this all the time. I can't give you a cold if I don't have a cold. You cannot give the Lord Jesus unless you have him residing in your heart. But we have to do it because there is need out there. So there are the hearers, those who need to hear the gospel, those who need to hear the word. And faith comes by hearing the word of God. But then there are the senders. For the senders, we have a question. We have one question. How shall they preach unless they are sent? And you say, well, who's the sender? Well, ultimately, listen, it is God who sends. It is God who sends people out. It, it, it must come first by God. But also, know this, God allows us to be a part of the sending process as a body of believers. Why? We have opportunities to pray and to provide. We can pray for Savannah and others that are doing the same thing. But we also can provide. And in that sense, God allows us to be involved in every aspect of every ministry God does. I don't know why God chooses to use us. He doesn't need us. As Warren Wiersbe once said, if God wanted to, he could send angels who would do it better and faster. 
But here's the thing. God not only wants to do a work through us, but he's also doing a work in us simultaneously. And so God has allowed us. God does the sending, but we can be involved in the process. And I love that. And then we have the scent. For the scent, we have a question, a description, and instruction. The first question, how shall they preach unless they are sent? I can't decide. Hey, God, you know what? I want to go to, you know, Hawaii. I was joking earlier uh, to someone about going to Hawaii to witness. I was like, ooh, I'll take that. I'll, I'll suffer. <laughs> I can't make that decision. The decision has to be God's decision as to where we go. And once we know that it's God's decision, then we have to understand the question, how shall they preach unless they are sent? This has a double connotation, once again. Why? Because God is a primary sender, but then there's a secondary, there's a church family that recognizes that you are being called by God to go. Therefore, we want to support in both prayer and financially. What a privilege to be sent by God. I like what David Livingston, Livingston said. He said this, if a commission by an earthly king is considered an honor, how can a commission by a heavenly king be considered a sacrifice? You see, you talk to Savannah or you talk to Leanne, they don't feel like they're sacrificing anything to go to Africa and live in a little hut or to live with these kids that are suffering. It is a privilege because they are called by the living God to give living love to those who need it the most. And that's an awesome thing. It's incredible. So it's not a sacrifice. It's a call. And that's how you know. By the way, that's how you know you're called. Because you don't feel like you're missing out on anything. In fact, you feel like you're gaining everything by obeying the call of God. But then we have the description. The description. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good, that's the, of, of good things. That's the description of the person who answers the call. God says, how beautiful are their feet. And by the way, Savannah will have her feet on display in the fellowship hall right after service. She's going to prop those little puppies right up on the table, let you look at them. <laughs> no, she's not. This is metaphorically speaking. What is this saying? This speaks of God's perception. What he's saying is, listen, feet are ugly. <laughs> feet are gruesome but to God if you use your feet to go where he's called you to God those are the most beautiful feet see he's trying to, to describe the fact that he approves of that when we are willing to obey and to go and he says ah oh, even those ugly stinky dogs of yours are beautiful there's a sweet aroma to God <laughs> when, when they're wore out from serving him with love Listen, love has a beautiful aroma in heaven. And I love this, folks. We, we would all say we want God's approval. We would. If I ask, hey, who wants God's approval? No one's going to go, not me. <laughs> and if you do, we need to pray for you. <laughs> but I love this about God's approval. God is looking for us to be obedient. He is. And, and when we are willing to be obedient, well, 2 Chronicles 16, 9, one of my favorite verses, I have a lot, but <clears throat> it says this, excuse me. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Leanne, Kenny and Leanne Crabtree are selling everything they have to be loyal to him, to go to Africa, to live humbly, very humbly, to, to run away from creature comforts, from all the glitz and glamour, for what a lot of Americans spend all their time thinking about and working towards, they want to give it all up so that they can go love some children. And God is saying, ah, oh, he's going to show himself mighty on their behalf, strong, on their behalf, just as he has been Savannah. I love that. As a church, we want to be a part of that. 
through our prayers and through our support. Now lastly, the instruction. There's instruction here. In case you're wondering, well, if God is calling me, if there are hearers out there, if there, there are hearers ready to hear the gospel and God is calling me, well, how do I do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Pastor Randy, that's a statement. How is that instruction? No, no. It's given us some awesome clues. See, I love this. It's not my persuasive words or your persuasive words, and I say this all the time. If I can talk someone into accepting Christ, someone else can talk them out. It has to be the power of God's word. That's a clue. What clue? Sometimes we talk too much, and we quote too few scriptures. It's the power of God that's going to bring someone to surrender Listen, I can, I can create all kinds of persuasive arguments. That's easy. But the word of God is what's living and alive and cuts through all of the minutia, all the noise. So if you're going to be the person who wants God to look at your sm- smelly, sweaty feet and go, those are beautiful, <laughs> you have to rely solely and completely on the living powerful word of God. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing Randy's jokes? No. (laughs) Hearing persuasive arguments? Uh Uh-uh. Hearing the word of God. It's freeing. It is freeing. Why? Well, because if I go and share someone, I cannot fail. Whether they accept Christ or don't accept Christ, that is not my responsibility. That's God's responsibility. All I need to do is go where he tells me to go, speak when he tells me to speak, and if I open my mouth, the word of God should fall out. I should bleed the word of God. You and I should think and meditate and live and decide and make choices and make, answer questions all based on what does God's word say? All I have to do, all you have to do, all we have to do is just be faithful. God has given us the word of God. God has given us salvation. We have to be faithful to share it. But I like what Vance Havner says. I like it and I don't like it. But it's true. Christians may not speak lies. They only sing them. We sing them. Oh, God, send me, I'll go, I'll proclaim. Lord, I will shout it from the hilltops. We sing all these kinds of words, and then we get in a crowd and we go, oh, I don't want to be rejected. We'll sing that we'll share. We'll sing that we'll proclaim. We'll sing that we're not ashamed of the gospel. But in a crowd, our singing becomes a lie because we're not willing to go. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says this. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though, listen, listen to this, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. That should be our life. You know, my wife took uh, Leanne and Savannah to Oatman to see the donkeys. And, and the people, and my wife came back and she said, it was so awesome to see Savannah witnessing to people, even on, you know, going up to Oatman. She even told a donkey, you need Jesus. And she, it was amazing. <laughs> but how many times have we been to Oatman, or we've been to Laughlin, or we've been to the grocery store, or we've been to the movies, or we've been at a family reunion, and we don't say anything about the gospel of Jesus Christ? 2 Corinthians 5.20 says we are ambassadors, as though God were pleading through us, be reconciled to God on Christ's behalf. Is that what people would say about you, Christian? That when they're around you, it's like God is pleading, be reconciled? Or they go, wow, I'm not even sure they're real Christians. (laughs) Spooky. Hmm. Isaiah 6. It's a very familiar verse. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and seated on his throne, and the veil of his robe filled the temple with glory. 
He says, hey, I was a man of unclean lips. He, he basically he said God's glory was so powerful, you know, it was like getting hit. All the way my relatives felt it. I'm a man of unclean lips, <laughs> I'm of a people of unclean lips. And then the angel took the tongs of the hot coal. Think about this. <laughs> the angel that stands in the presence of Almighty God, and here's some hot coals that he can't touch. I'm like, that, that's got to be some incredible. And he cleanses his lips with it. And then in verse 8, it says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, so here's God speaking. And by the way, he's speaking right now, the same words. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then Isaiah says, here I am. Send me. Ooh, 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 I got the answer, me. <laughs> Why? Because he sensed he's been in the presence of God. Listen, the reaction of any Christian who's been in the presence of God is ooh, 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 send me. I've got to share this with somebody else. The deeper your encounter with Jesus, the more you cannot keep your mouth shut about his glory. How could you? If you've really encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, how could you keep that a secret? Think about the biggest celebrity you can think of that you look up to. Imagine meeting them, spending the day with them. And then the next day you go to a family reunion. Would you go, I don't want to tell anybody. I hung out with, you know, whoever, Pee Wee Herman or whoever you idolize. <laughs> I got to hang with Pee Wee. <laughs> it was a big adventure. <laughs> now, whoever you idolize, whoever you think is amazing, if you got to spend the day with them, you'd, you'd be calling up Grandma. Grandma, guess who I hung out with? You tell everyone, why is it that we are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ that truly saved us unless maybe we're religious and not truly saved? We have to examine our hearts. So important. So let's answer the question. The question was, hearer, sender, sent, which are you? You don't want to, I'm going to answer it for you. We're to be all of those. What? Oh, yeah. Here, we were all once lost, and maybe you are today. So we're all the hearers. All of us. We're, one time, I was a heathen. I was not saved. I was an atheist, and someone took the time to share the gospel with me, and I listened. Sender. Well, we are all to be praying for missionaries and the crab trees. And, you know, we have several different missionaries that we support, some local, some overseas, some to Israel. We're to be senders. We're to join God in saying, yes, that is good ministry. We're going to be praying for them. We're going to send financial support when we can. We're going to do what we can to support them because that is good. We want to be a part of the sending process. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be a part. He doesn't need us. He allows us. So we're hearers. We're all hearers at one point. And by the way, even once we're saved, we're to continue to hear from the Lord. We can all be a part of the sending by praying and supporting. And what about the sent? Well, we're all sent. Remember the Great Commission, Matthew 28? And I love how Jesus starts it. He says, all authority. All authority? Yeah, the word for all in the Greek is pas. Guess what pas means? means all. Yeah, simple. So it's all authority. And then just in case you weren't sure, he says, in heaven and on earth. Oh, that means complete all. You weren't kidding when you said all. In heaven and earth? Oh, yeah. He says, so I have all authority. Okay, so if you have all authority, then I should be completely obedient to authority. That's what we're told in Scripture. He says, go therefore. How many of us are going? Well, just don't answer that. That could be taken the wrong way. Listen, go therefore. <laughs> I'm sorry. Pray for your pastor. <laughs> Go, therefore, and what? Make disciples, not just believers. Because we can believe in a lot of things. 
But a disciple takes belief and puts it, it to practice. We are to make disciples of all nations. So you go, oh, but Pastor Randy, man, I don't know if I'm called overseas. No, 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 hold on a second. Some people have a special call, good for them. I'm not called to go overseas. I'm called to come to the desert from Houston to here. You might be called to go from here to the grocery store, here to Oatman, here to your job, here to your family reunion. We're to make of all nations, including our own. John R.W. Stott says this. We must be global Christians with a global vision because our God is a global God. God is concerned about the world. We're told that in John 3, 16. For God so loved the what? Cosmos, the world that he gave his only begotten son. Do you realize that Jesus Christ is a missionary? Because he left heaven, the comforts of, of heaven, the glory of heaven to come down to earth, to our dirt, our dirt planet. To talk to dirt people. We come from dirt, by the way. <laughs> we, we'll return to ashes. Because he was the first missionary. He was the cosmic missionary. He was the one that came because he was in love, and he is in love with the needy, us. Every person who is not saved is in great need, and you and I have the key to meet that need. For my God shall supply all our need, plur, uh, singular, according to his riches and glory, which are found in Christ Jesus. Do you have the Lord? Well, guess what? We're to be hearers, senders. <laughs> yeah, we're to be sent. Are you? If you're not, you can repent. How about that? <laughs> I didn't mean to rhyme, but it does, so enjoy it. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, what an opportunity that we have here in our Christian life. Why God would use us in this capacity, mind blower. But why would we want to miss it? So be a hearer, be a part of being a sender, and then step up and say, ooh, 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 God, send me. And be a complete Christian. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the crab trees. We thank you so much that they have listened and they are listening and they are obeying. What a witness to us. <laughs> what a glorious promise we have through you, Lord Jesus, that you are willing to save all. For you so loved the world that you gave of yourself. And Lord, Holy Spirit, you, you are actively wanting to use each one of us to bring glory, to point to, to point to the Lord Jesus Christ, to let people know that, that there, is a, there is a way to fulfill our hearts, our loneliness, our hurt, to be forgiven of the filthy sins that we've in, in, wrapped ourselves up in and we roll around in. And God, we, to be cleansed by you, to be wrapped in robes of righteousness. Oh God, help us not to be ashamed of the cross of Christ, to be willing to be sent to our neighbor, whomever that may be. Lord God, may you speak to each one of our hearts this morning. <laughs> may we listen. May we glorify you. May we obey you. Because all authority is found in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And so, Father, thank you for sending him. Lord Jesus, thank you for obeying. And Holy Spirit, thank you for speaking to our hearts this morning. And so, God, we're going to sing one last song, and in this, may we proclaim your goodness. May we also mean it. May we not lie in our worship, but glorify you with our lives. And we ask all of this in the precious 
and beautiful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's children said, let's stand and sing. God bless you.